Hello everyone and welcome back to Shekinah Publishing Presents. Today we're going to talk a little bit about current events, but we're going to move right into a little bit more about the Lamb and the Bear, Divine Quest. Talk a little bit about the characters and how they interact and some of the mechanics there and, and the reasoning for it. First of all, thank you to everyone who is listening and spread the word about the, the channel. The aim of Shekinah Publishing is just to, to help bring people to know who Christ is through the written word and also through speaking. Once again, I want to ask you if you would kindly support us by hitting subscribe and, and like, but also check out some of the things that we offer. The money goes back into the ministry and the things that we can do. Um, it's just a way to get the word of God out. We have still have our shirts from the Shine Your Light in the Dark, Your Dark Corner conference that featured Brian Godawa and Brother Miles Rainey. And you can go to patricktaylor.net and see how to order those if you would like. And also, a Shekinah Publishing and the Lamb and the Bear shirts are available also. But now to the most important stuff. <clears throat> you know, it's it's getting darker and darker. What's right is wrong, and what's wrong is right. And the Lord told us it was going to be that way, that things are going to get to that point. And as much as it pains us, you know, I really was, was kind of shocked thinking about it because I get so frustrated at seeing some of the things happen in our country and happen to our kids. And there was a devotional I was reading as I was getting ready to do the Bible study with my girls. We're still doing Narnia, of course. And it asked, do you love what we have here in this world more than you love God? And on face value, we said, no, 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 we love God because we know seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. And, and that's what the lesson was about. There's at the end of yeah, we're in the final chapter. They're headed to Care Parrot Bell. And on the way, they're so tired the day of the battle, the night, that they just basically slept where they were. But there's a, just one paragraph and two sentences. Food was provided for them by Aslan. And about four or five years ago, um, one of my students in my fifth grade class made the connection between that and Jesus feeding the 5,000. As many times as I read that story over and over, I didn't make that connection. It, it took a young man to make the connection pointed out to me. So beware and listen. God's talking to us all the time. That's a lesson in and of itself. So I wanted to bring that out to my girls. And, you know, not just that God provides food, but he wants to provide for everything. But there's a key there. The key is every one of those folks that were in following Aslan were following Aslan. They weren't looking for food. No hunting parties went out. Of course, these are talking animals, so there was no provisions carried from place to place. He provided because they were about his business. And when you go into Matthew and you look at where he fed the 5,000 men and the women and children and the 12 baskets were left over, and my girls get really all amazed at that 12 baskets left over, but those people left everything. They left their daily lives to hear the words of the master, to have the bread of life, which is what we survive on. You know, God knows our needs. He designed us. He knows we need food. He will provide that food if we seek him. And so as I was just reaching, reading and, and, and building up and, and thinking of, of different ways, allowing God to, to show me what he wanted me to say and to provoke my kids into asking questions and make connections, I came across that. It was basically a pastor was talking about the fact that, you know, that the Western civilization was founded on Christian morals, and it's our duty to vote. And if we vote together, we would be ruling. That we rule here, too, as kings and priests, which is the following lesson in Narnia. But it 
the, the question was, are we so worried about our worldly government? Do we love it more than we love God? And sometimes when I get frustrated and, and, and I'll just, why God? Sometimes. I have to stop. It made me think, am I wanting to save the United States government the way I thought it was? More than I want to serve God. Now, don't get me wrong. God wants everyone to be saved. He is not willing that any should perish and fall short of the glory of God. He wants us all to come to him. He knows in his infinite omnipotence, omnipotence, that not all of us are, but he still died on the cross for each and every one of us. So I have to question myself. You know, I am called to be a, to shine a light, to make a change, to point out things that need to be corrected, bring God's blessings back on our country. But do I turn it into this so-called holy, righteous anger, or I become so pious, as they say, so heavenly good, so heavenly ba uh, minded that I'm no earthly good? Um but we can't be when we're seeking God and his will. And most of us know as we peek at things that, you know, this is all God's plan. And it's those of us who see it are shouting, hey, hey, we're going off the cliff. We're going off the cliff. It's the end. And we're in the cases to the world. But we're, we're, it, are we... Are we so worried about the U.S. government that we're not worried about God's work? And that's, I think that's the key. And when we get grounded back into God, he's going to let us know when to speak up, how to speak up, what words to say. He promised us. Don't worry about it. I'll give you the words to say if you're plugged into me. And so, you know, I encourage you. Seek out the Heavenly Father. Make sure your relationship is right with him. And all these things should hurt you. The fact that the devil is trying to take our kids should hurt you. And our job is to stand in the gap. But not to the point that we become angry in a hateful way. God abhors evil, but he loves people. As the old saying, hate the sin, not the, not the sinner. So we're all sinners and we deserve what? was supposed to happen to us but we didn't we didn't get it because of Christ's love for us so I'm asking you just as you take time and you look and you see things going on stand in the gap protect our kids but also do it in a way that we can win others over to know who Christ is so now let's move on <clears throat> as we've been working you just can see that uh, God is moving and one of the ways I like to share is to draw on the things that God put in my heart. You know, he plants dreams, he, he plants desires, and he even takes the things that the devil thinks he's destroying you with and uses it for his good. And I've been an avid reader. Those of you who know me personally know that I would read anything, including the encyclopedia I could get my hands on. And... I was always fascinated with mythology. That was my favorite part of, of literature when I was going through school, when we got to the mythology part. And my best friend had some childcraft books that were full of mythological stories. And then uh, the, the Book of Virtues that came out, I guess, in the 90s, 80s, 90s, were chock full of these mythology stories. But as I grew older and, and God revealed things, there, there are some truths to mythology. And that's one of the reasons why I use it in the, the Divine Quest books. Similar to Ron Godawa does in his books, and even C.S. Lewis and Tolkien did with their books, in a way that showcases God's glory and majesty. Now, a lot of the mythology that I'm using ties into the fact that there were rebellious angels who are here on earth, Satan being their leader. There were others. One-third of heaven rebelled. 
And so they take the guise of some of these pagan deities because they were given, according to Psalms and Genesis, the world was divided up amongst some of them. And so their, their pantheons were these gods who lived among the people. And I know that's not believed by everyone, and, and that's fine. The main thing is Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and rose to save us again. That is the key. And God is God Almighty, and you, you know you're a sinner. You can't help yourself. And Jesus is the only light. You accept him as your Lord and Savior. That is that is the bedrock. The rest of it, we don't need to be fighting over. But that's what I take. And in the story of Divine Quest, it's basically someone wrestling with himself. Who they are, their culture, their beliefs, and trying to square it up with God. Now, in his defense... He's a pagan, but he's got every opportunity to see who God is, and he's wrestling with that. So those of you who read the book, you see the glossary, and, and Barak, the main character, means bear. And in the story, there's a, a Finnish mythology that's tied in as the old soul. And... It's one of those mythological creatures that basically roams the forest, a giant bear. Not a normal bear. Bears are, are scary enough as they are, as you can see in this video that's playing now. Uh, they're not ones to mess with, and, and they were revered by a lot of people coming through life. In fact, one of the David's big points was he chased off a bear that tried to eat his sheep. And a young man doing that, that's, that's, not, a, that's not an easy task. It's not something that most of us could do even now, unless we had our rifle. But the, the also plays a part, but then there's the, the double meaning of Barak. Is he going to follow the bear himself or the lamb? Who will he choose? And of course, we know the lamb represents Jesus. Because to a lot of the Vikings, this Christian religion was the lamb god, the meat god. The loving God. Yes, they saw Charlemagne. Charlemagne was the reason why a lot of people claim the Viking rage started. He cut down one of their famous pagan totem poles, the Ermacil. But God had started reaching into there, and through their interactions with the Saxons and, and England, Christianity was brought to the Viking lands. And so some people had already accepted the Christ. And there was turmoil. Should we follow the old ways? Should we follow the new ways? The, the viewpoints, the world viewpoints. And even though it's written to be set in 1000 AD, it's very similar to our struggles today. There is a struggle for viewpoint. And which one will be dominant, which one will rule, which one will take over, which one will make the laws, which one will the culture be defined by. And so hopefully those insights tie into what you see and, 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 and what you feel as you read the book, and you can make some connections that way. Now, going back to the old soul, he's, he's a pretty dangerous creature. As he goes through, he, he slays a couple of walruses, a couple of polar bears. But he's a primordial creature from the beginning. And he was created for a purpose. There are some creatures God created for a purpose that really don't fit into our idea of things. And some are mentioned, Leviathan, Behemoth, and some people say they're regular animals, and, and like I say, that's not something to, to fight over to the extent that you're not Christian anymore if you don't believe the way I do. There's only one thing that ties us in, is knowing God the Father. But in the story, it serves a purpose. And as you see him come through, we discover that purpose he serves. Now, Barack has to make that choice, but he's not left all alone. His father is, is Christian, 
and holds to his Christian beliefs to the point that he gets persecuted. But there's another character introduced, Arwen, that has seen firsthand what trauma is all about. Most of her family was killed in a Viking raid. She's from Wales. Her and her brother had to move to another village, were raised by a older friar that lived there. So she developed a personal relationship with Jesus. And her, some people would call her Mary Sue. And that's a word they like throwing around nowadays about characters. But as you read later books, you'll you'll see a little bit more about her. But she does serve an important role in Brock's life. And she's got every reason to hate him. So she's conflicted in and of herself. But she's seen firsthand the power of God. Now what brings it in and makes it a little bit more like Peretti's books and, and Godawa's books are that you're seeing the spiritual battle play out. It's not just a metaphorical thing. It's not an abstract thing. There are beings right there fighting around us, whether they be the fallen gods or they are the angelic host. And so this this book is not for little kids in the sense that you need to be ready to speak about some of the things, the possessions and things that are in there. But I hope that it brings to mind that our actions can tip the balance in that battle going on around us. Prayers affect much. The fervent prayers of, of people who love God affect much. And you'll see that throughout the book. But you'll also see that there's things that, that can't be avoided. There's things that have to happen. There's things that do happen. So I encourage you to, to pick it up if you haven't. The La Divine Quest, The Lamb and the Bear. It's available on Amazon. The second book is Fire and Ice, Divine Quest, Fire, The Fire and the Ice. <clears throat> it's another choice book for the characters, and it's going to follow them where this one leaves off. And it's going to introduce some new mythological characters. Um, most of us love Christmas, right? And if you've been around, you've heard the pagan tie-ins to what, what we celebrate as Christmas. <clears throat> Iceland's not any different. They actually have the Yule Lads. Yule is a word people try to use for Christmas. It's a pagan word, and it's a holiday around that time of year. The Yule Lads are all sons of this troll named Greta, and she plays a big role in the next book. But there's also four other characters that show up that are just beyond interesting to me personally of the Landvetter. In fact, they're so important to Iceland, they're on their seal. These four giant beings who are the guardians of the land. Because, as you know, there's all kinds of volcanoes in the land of ice and glaciers. And even our literary history ties into the idea that its pathway or the gates of hell go through one of those volcanoes, the hell cover. And their job is to keep chaos from coming out of those volcanoes. In this second book, there's going to be a story about how they got the job of being land veteran, how Iceland wasn't destroyed by Odin. Um, but they, they play a role in this book as being guardians. And they're guarding against the intrusion of the Lamb God, who has already made some inroads here. So hopefully you can make the connections between our day and that day about the conflicting nature of the worldviews and understand that we don't always win by carrying a sword or a gun. And I have guns. I want to protect my family. I want to hunt. There may be a time I have to hunt for food coming before long. But I don't hunt for sport. It's, it's for food. But I don't think the gun solves everything. 
it's a right we have. But the love of God, like the old story, the bronze bow, and it's a very old story, but if you've never heard it, I encourage you to listen to it. it shows that the strongest power is the love of God. It can do anything. Now, I've rambled, which is what I'm good at, some people tell me, but back to the point. I, I hope you pick up Divine Quest, the Lamb of the Bear, and, and the fire and the ice when it comes out, and I'll let you know. You'll find out. And s read it through the lens of the worldview battles. One of the, the things that I wrote about on the website is the difference in how we view night and day. In the beginning, in Genesis, God said it was night and day, the evening and, and day, the, the first day. And even the Jewish day starts at sundown, <clears throat> meaning the night comes first and the day. And this is kind of the nighttime, the dream phase, the preparation phase. The daytime will come when we get into our eternal bodies. Whereas the world, and particularly the pagan idea, is the daytime comes first. This world is the daytime. We must fight while it's daytime. The night follows. You fight while it's day because when night comes, it's over. And yes, they had their afterlife, but really everything was, was now. In a way, it is true. We, we have to make that decision now about how we're going to spend our eternity. But this is just the night. The real living, the real created experience is when we come into eternity. Whether it's a positive eternity in the presence of God or eternal death out of the presence of God. That's a choice we make now. Well, like I say, I encourage you to, to check that out. We're already working on Light the Dark Corner of Your World conference for 2023, 2024. We have a couple people we're contacting about joining us again for interviews. And if you know of someone you would like to hear, I, I encourage you to leave a, a comment down below or you can contact Contact us at patricktaylorteoc at gmail dot com. We welcome anything that you send. Um, you can comment on the website patricktaylor dot net. We uh, love to hear from you. I love to hear how God's working in your life. It encourages me because, like I say, sometimes it looks like we're getting beat up and we're getting bruised and. But everything works for a purpose of God, and we're called to be faithful, to love people into the kingdom. So I hope you have a great day. Have a blessed day, and, and you, you take this to heart. Get a chance to read the book. Thank you. Um, leave a comment. Leave criticism. Let us know. But I just want you to know that God loves you, and he wants you to know him personally. God bless you. Have a great day.